Happy Monday! Welcome to the PHNX Sun Devil Show. I'm Anthony Totri. Yeah, this are. guy, this guy right here, that's Big Pokey, Shane yeah. Diefenbach, and this guy, this guy, way, way over here. That's Eric Ruby. Yeah, yes. Senor Ruberto over there, and then you got DJ Jacob yeah. Franklin making all the magic happen behind the, 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 the DJ Jacob Franklin, he's, he has a cute. Guys, do us a solid. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And if you're listening on audio for the first time, Woof. or if you haven't already, do us a solid. <laughs> And please leave a five star if you're review. Listening on audio, I'm sorry, that must have scared you. My goodness, you just you just got the barks, got yeah. the yips, dogs got the are in yips. the building, got the yips, yeah, man. I have the yaps, the yaps, yeah. the roughs. I have the roughs. It's got the roughs, guys. How was your weekend? It was good. Yeah, just good. good. I mean, mine. My, what, what did I do this weekend? Mine was good. Mine was a solid weekend. I, I mean, no complaints really. Do you think your weekend was better than his? Uh, it was his birthday. It, it was, was my birthday. birthday. <laughs> No, I think he probably had a really good weekend. I did have a Do you feel good. like you had a better weekend than him? Yeah, I always do. Yeah, no, I have fair. a better weekend than everybody. And a better Ever? week. Yeah, every single, here. every single weekend. It's a guy that just wakes up and just he's yeah. ready to roll every uh, single day. He pisses excellence. He pisses no, excellence. I don't. I don't do that. You don't piss excellence? No. Okay, I mean, that's, that's all I do. <laughs> Normal guy. Oh, my goodness. Look, we got a lot to get into today. We've got another edition of Kelsey's Corner at the tail end of the show for a little bit of an update on what's going on with Arizona State softball. We're going to be talking potential replacements for some ASU coaches, or I guess one specific ASU coach. Also going to be talking about the college basketball coaching carousel that seems like it's going to get started here and if it that, has any implications that asu is a part of you think I, so I, I'll, I'll tell you they are oh, here for I'll it. tell you i love the tease i love the tease but let's go ahead let's start things off with the worst news Woo-hoo! that we possibly have for you guys today and that is that arizona state wide receiver coach rashad samples is in fact leaving sun devil nation um, to become the assistant head coach and running backs coach over in Oregon for the Oregon Ducks and Dan Lanning. Definitely a big hit in a lot of ways for the Sun Devils. Shane, this is a guy that we've we've had the chance to, to really sit down and, and talk to multiple times. We've seen the way he coaches out on the field. And I think it's, it's again, we were here prior to when Sam mm-hmm. was here. And then when he got here and we've, we've seen the rebirth um, of that wide receiver room, just your immediate reaction to, to that news when it broke. I feel cheated, lied to. Yeah. Um, and d- frankly, disgusted. No, yeah. uh, it, it's it's awesome for him as a person. And, and when we talked to Kenny about a month ago, he said that you know when when he leaves a place or somebody leaves him, like he's not spiteful because it doesn't directly impact him. Like, yeah, it sucks that a guy underneath him is now gone. The yeah. guy that helps so much in this recruiting cycle, the last recruiting cycle, and for recruiting cycles in the future, especially moving to the Big Twelve. Um, but that doesn't affect him. Like he wants them to go succeed, and and that's his job as a head coach is not only for the players but the coaches. He, he you know the coaches. If you have like a long term wide receivers coach, then you con- kind of failed them. Yeah, because they should move on at some point um, to a higher position. Nobody just un- unless that's their dream to just be a receivers coach, which a lot of people it's probably not. Yeah. Um, and we know Sam has had aspirations for the NFL. We know he has been in the NFL as a running backs coach for the Rams. Um, and you know, this, this may seem lateral, like a lateral move to some people. Uh, I know when the, the rumors first started, people were like, there's no substance. To this. There's no way he would do that. Why would he do that? It doesn't really make sense, but it's not uh, like, let's be honest, uh, Oregon, not only a yeah. more storied football program, but also right now, like they're, they're set up for success. And he's getting um, a bump as the assistant head coach. Of course. Um, a bump in terms of play calling, a bump in terms of involvement in the program and probably a bump in terms of pay raise. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think this is, again, something that we were discussing in the Die Hard Discord kind of over the weekend when that kind of happened, to your point, Shane, about a, a lateral move. We know that Rashad Samples' his dream um, and something that he said was to be the youngest college football head coach. 
and and I think he's well on his way to doing that. I believe he's only 29 years old, still absolutely ridiculous. I think he might be 28. Which is insane. Insane. I'll, I'll and and you him. expected you you expected to lose him, right? This is something that we talked about yeah, a he's, lot. He's 29. That you expected to lose him at a certain point. Eric, I feel like what what probably is the worst part about this is you didn't maybe anticipate losing him this early. I think you you ideally would have had another year. Yeah. And I think once you got past that point, the expectation was, okay, at that point, anything is on the table. Yeah. Right? This does feel a little bit out of nowhere, not because he doesn't deserve it because, A, he does, or that he's not good enough because, B, he absolutely yeah. is. It's just like, oh, man, like right now, like yeah. just as we are starting to get momentum as a program, the wide receiver room is, is one of the most stacked on the team. He plays a massive role in that. And I know it doesn't like Shane said, like directly affect Kenny because Kenny's still going to operate and do what he does. And he he is, I believe, good enough to overcome losing somebody like this. But th- this is not a small like piece of the puzzle to no, lose. No, no, no. I mean, in all of like the articles or whatever, like if you didn't know anything about Rashad Samples, right? And you're an Oregon fan and now you're doing all sorts of research. Every single article is like, he's one of the best recruiters in the country. Which is a- true. And he, he was ranked as the best in the Pac-12 last year. And a top ten by twenty four seven sports, so it it is a massive deal to a program that's trying to get back on its feet. And is it the end of the world? Absolutely not, because he's not Kenny Dillingham, but he has the potential to become somebody like him, or or even become somebody who's even highly like higher regarded than him. Like mm-hmm. th- this dude's an absolute stud, and it was a I don't know, like a blessing, but a very big positive that ASU had him as a weapon in recruiting and coaching and everything like that. And no brainer move for him as well. It's just it stings. It yeah. definitely stings. It, it does sting. And, and I think again, there are there are certain elements to Rashad Samples leaving that hurt maybe a little bit more than others. And you bring up the recruiting. Thankfully for Arizona State, they're recruiting uh, on top of having young guys like a Kenny Dillingham to to really lead the charge. That recruiting tandem of Rashad Samples was also big with defensive backs coach Brian Carrington, and you're still able to keep him locked down where he's at as it stands mm-hmm. right now. Another guy that in time you probably expect to lose to another program just because of the caliber of coach and recruiter that he is. Um, but, I mean, again, even at practices, right, It's we've seen the way that he interacts with those guys yeah. in the wide receiver room with guys like Elijah Badger, Xavier Guillory, Jordan Tyson, and, and you really can't, like, recreate that. You can bring in a, a replacement, right? You could bring in a new ASU wide receivers coach, and they will at a certain point. But it, it's going to be difficult to replicate the type of coach that Rashad Samples is. Yeah, but look, Kenny is, so, like, in his first year without proving anything yet, he got two of the best recruiters in the country yeah. to join his staff. I'm I'm fairly confident. That's a very fair point. I'm fairly confident that he's going to be able to replace him. And you can't really replace a guy like Rashad Samples because, of one— the, the personality but two the like he's a unicorn in terms of age and and experience yeah. um the only other unicorn in that realm is brian carrington yeah <laughs> exactly um but you can find you can find guys that are just as hungry um and i'm sure sam is going to be a valuable resource to this to, to kenny still and vice mm-hmm. versa um ltc saying so basically it comes down to a bump and an assistant head coaching tag it's not just a tag um because you are now the one step closer to that head coaching role. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if in two years he's the young head coach in, in college football. And, and I mean, it's not just the fact that like, okay, he's like the assistant head coach now. It, it's also for where the program is, like you mentioned, Shane, like it's a, it's a much more like ready to win now, higher profile. It, it accelerates his process. Like, oh yeah, especially it, if they're a college football playoff team next year. Correct, even, even if he was an associate head coach here. Like, there, it's a diff, different place right now where ASU football and Oregon football is. Yeah. And obviously, you would hope that he'd be a part of getting ASU closer to that. But realistically, where it all stands, like, if you are trying to become the youngest head coach in college football history, this was the right move yeah. for you. And, and yeah, Kenny will probably find somebody to be able to replicate, you know, hopefully most of what he did. But he, he was good enough to where... I. I'm not sure that he could be fully replaced immediately. Like you're probably going to have to teach some guy, work him up and get him there. But like you said that he could be maybe an asset to Kenny in the future. Nobody leaves this program now. feels like on bad terms. Oh yeah. A- and so with the transfer portal and with the very kind things that Dilly has said about Sam out publicly about, he will p- probably be the youngest head coach in college football history and, and how good he is. Uh, you would imagine that if there's some um, just oh hey we're talking in circles oh how is your time at ASU oh how are things going over there do you believe in Kenny 
oh, you best believe that that Samp is going to be saying nothing but positive words about ASU. Yeah, and that's huge, right? It's it's something that Kenny's talked about in terms of players specifically with the the entire idea of relationships and the importance of of being truthful and honest with a lot of these guys. Like Samp knows exactly the type of person that Kenny is and vice versa. There's no ill will. Yeah. Um, and, and, and again, I think at a certain point when you start to see players enter the portal from Oregon, and I think that's that's something, again, that happens every single year. Yep. Now you have that relationship that cuts even deeper because Kenny was a guy that was at Oregon at a certain point. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the scary thing, though. Yeah, let's let's go ahead. Let's talk about the scary thing. <sighs> Who, if any, yeah. is going to follow him? Well, I, I'll tell you this. I, I don't think Elijah Badger leaves. I don't think so. Badger either. was here before. That's I think Badger's people, here after. People, that's where people want to go. Yeah, that's where people want to go. Because I... Because, because we, I mean, we could say this. First of all, I, I, we know for a fact, and this is, this is not going to come as a surprise to anybody. He was obviously heavily, heavily targeted uh, when he was st- come, deciding if he wanted to come back yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, and he decided to stay, obviously, because he's here. Um, and that just isn't that isn't just because of Rashad Samples. Yeah. For a lot of reasons. There is a lot of reasons for it. So I, I, I would say, in terms of guys that you you need to maybe just have your ears perked up a little bit, I would say Troy O'Meara is one. Because he was one that that Samp went to go get. Yep. Um, Jordan Tyson is another one that Samp went and got from the portal. Um, so that leaves you. I, I would say those are the two. I'm I, not worried about X. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm pretty confident that Tyson would stay just because of his his history and rehabbing for a whole year here, yeah. like getting to know not only the coaching staff but especially the the people that nobody sees and the training staff, um, and how good he already looks. Yeah, I would be pretty shocked, um, but. Is there anybody that you guys look to immediately and you're like, mm, maybe? Cooper Perry. <laughs> well, right. Well, yeah, yeah, Cooper's not, not here. Cooper's yet. not here, but yeah, I put that in the diehard Discord. Your your chances of getting Cooper Perry went down um, significantly with, with Rashad Samples heading to Oregon. Um, and, and, you know, I, somebody tweeted out on social media, I forget who it was, but it was like, you know, I'll put it at a at a one percent chance that Arizona State can can try and reel back in a guy like Cooper Perry, and the only reason you put that at a one percent is because they've got themselves a guy like Kenny Dillingham yeah. at the helm. But realistically, Rashad Samples was was a big part of that. And now he's at Oregon. It already felt like Cooper Perry was the the lead horse in that race for the top recruit in Arizona. So that does that does sting a little bit. But it, it doesn't just sting with Coop. Like it stings a lot of lot of potential recruits down the line. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing that stings, though, that everyone can point to and that everybody, uh, that's kind of the obvious, is how excited were we to go into the Big 12 with two guys mm-hmm. on both sides of the ball that could recruit in Texas and, mm-hmm. and the South? Um, how excited were we that a guy that's dad coaches at Duncanville in Texas, yep. a really, really, you know, a, a farm for elite talent going into college and the NFL, is now leaving like yeah. that 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 was really exciting um but now as i said he's leaving so it stinks and and the thing we can remind ourselves is look surprise this might come as a shock this team isn't gonna win a natty this year um and wait they're not no and i sample was gonna be gone probably at the end of next year anyway or at the end of this year anyway like for we asu ju- yeah we just kind of assumed this so it stinks, but we'll be all right. And I think what stinks the most is, like, you you lose a coach like that. Not the time. You you lose a coach like that without, like, really seeing the on-field right. transition, right? Like, you get one year of great recruiting, whatever. You go three and nine. There's hype expectation now for year two. And then, boom, you, you, right. you don't really get to see it. Yeah, it's, it's tough because you... You knew that your time was limited. Nobody thought that he was going to be here forever. There was not going to be a head coaching position open here. Like there was going to be not a ton of room to grow. But everybody wanted to see it just a little bit more. Yeah. Right. And I don't know if any of the current guys that are that are necessarily going to be in the mix to be like big contributors on this team are going to leave. Like I, I, that's not exactly something that I'm sitting back like oh bracing myself for. But at the end of the day, like personal relationships with your position coach and with somebody like. Sam are is very important. Yeah, and if, if Oregon comes calling because Sam knows that you have been over here working and maybe you're not totally thrilled with what where your opportunity is or he thinks you could be used more, whatever. 
Like that that's a dangerous proposition. And I don't know if that's necessarily something that's like that's going to happen, but just the the thought of that looming, it's it's the current state of college football. Like that just is what it is. Yeah, and I think the most dangerous part about this and I'm I again, I don't have any like for sure knowledge that this would would be the case. I'm not sure if it's even like allowed in the rules, but Rashad Samples knows how much these guys are making, right? Rashad Samples oh, yeah. knows how much every wide receiver in his room is making. Um, and we, we've we talked about the, the NIL war chest that ASU has versus some of those other schools. It's more of a sandbox than a war chest. Um, and, and you know what, ha- what, what Oregon has, right? Oh, so certainly different. that is something to keep an eye on. And I'll be totally honest with you. They're like... If there was a position group on Arizona State that could afford to lose a player, it's the wide receiver room. Mm-hmm. Um, and I honestly figured at least one would enter the portal after the spring season ended just because there are a lot of bodies in yeah. that room. So it is what it is at the, at, at this point. Like, again, it sucks. But on the flip side of it, Samp left the room in really good shape. Whoever yeah. the next wide receivers coach is, you have a lot of faith in the guys that are going to stay in that room. Yeah. So we'll see. Sunday scaries with that though, with that whole situation. Mm-hmm. Samp's Sunday scaries. Toadry was like patting me on the back, being like, "It's okay, it's okay." And I was like, "Yeah, it's okay." And then um, yesterday we were like, "It's not okay. It's less okay. It's, it's far okay. less okay. It's it's actually on fire. It's not no, great. It's not. It's all great." R.I.P. Texas to Tempe pipeline. No, 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 no. no. The kidding. pipeline's still I'm there. Kidding. The pipeline's still there. I'm pipeline's still there. I know. You, you see, you. you He's frozen now. Okay, he's less frozen. He's better. He's better. But look, look, we know we know it's something we'd brought up before that Kenny Dillingham really is is a class act on social media mm-hmm. and in person in terms of like wishing these guys the best. Um and it's no different with some of these coaches. This is what Kenny Dillingham had actually tweeted out um right after the news came out that it was official that Samp was going to be leaving for Oregon. Kenny tweeted, fired up for Rashad Sample. Second time he's become an assistant head coach in the Power Five before the age of 30. Forever grateful for him helping us get ASU back in a forward direction and can't wait to see his career continuing to skyrocket. Again, there's just, coaches don't do that. Nope. Coaches don't tweet that. Coaches they don't. They will. Don't. They'll start. Uh, they're you gonna think start they doing start? I, I think, I feel like he's kind of setting a foundation and it's not going to happen until ASU has some more actual, like, numerical success that falls along with it but people are going to start taking note of how kenny dillingham navigates relationships in the new era of college sports where there is a lot of vitriol and there is a lot of like oh you stabbed me in the back right so i think once people see the dividends that it pays they'll be like wow he's kind of onto something he's treating people like human he's congratulating them when they go talking highly of them and look at that the karma is coming back around to his program players are wanting to come there coaches are wanting to come there yeah because all they do when they leave is speak highly of asu which is kind of like get that wildfire spreading that word of mouth it wasn't always the case no <laughs> no, case. no ltc in the chat it's samples that means you can only take a piece not the whole thing <laughs> hey that's pretty we good should have saw it that's coming. pretty good that's LTC, pretty good you're always he's right, on fire man. man he's on fire look I don't know if you guys saw it this weekend. I know Eric definitely saw it because he was there. But for those of you that weren't, Eric, how was the the party y'all had over at Gila River? Oh, Resorts? he was there. He was there on Sunday. I was the there both. Was all, there. Oh, yeah, all three of us were there. Yeah, yeah, you were, were just a loser who didn't show yeah. up. Come on. Yeah. There's one person who wasn't there. I don't know what you listen, man. You would want to know how it was because it was fantastic yeah. and amazing. Are you gonna tell me about it? I don't know if I I don't know if you deserve it. You weren't even wow, there. Wow, that's crazy. You're just gatekeeping the fun. Gate- no, I see you can't I can't gatekeep. You could have joined the fun. Totri, you need a key, man. To the to the gate. Yeah, apparently everyone's gatekeeping now. I know. Sucks. Why? Who else is gatekeeping? Uh, apparently, I am. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you like, are everybody's doing it. Speaking of, J Cole is. A oh my gosh, we're softy. not doing this. He's a softy. Guys, I touch the ball, coach. At Gila River Resorts and Casinos, <laughs> nobody does it better. They offer an authentic and I'm immersive sorry. experience with an unprecedented level of entertainment and excitement that you're not going to find anywhere else in the desert. They haven't just set a high bar. They have set the highest in the valley with their state-of-the-art gaming floor. It's got it all with over 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, and live table games, not to mention Arizona's largest casino sports book. Now, for those people that weren't there, hmm. let everybody know what was going on at that PHNX watch party. So it was a collab with uh, PHNX. It was just the Suns watch party, but also during the Final Four games. And then it was the collection by Mike Bibby. So Bibby was there, showed off all of these different shoes uh, that he had, a little Q&A as well. It was a really cool setup as well. And it's always fun over there. I mean, people were going crazy watching the Suns game, watching the Iowa Final UConn four, yeah. when I was there. I remember when it was the, when that screen was set for, uh, for Iowa UConn. 
Uh, people were losing their minds it was over the uh, the Gila River Resorts and Casinos Wild Horse Pass, but it, it was such a good time. You walk in and just the the vibes are off the charts. You walk in like, okay, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good night here. They're always off the charts, guys. Head to Gila River Resorts and Casinos and let them show you what next level is all about. You do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit playatgila.com for more details. I'm gonna do me and and um and 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 give you give you some winners right now. Um, winnie winnie chicken dinny we got a nice we had a nice parlay pick for bet mgm uh, and obviously we're going to talk about the national championship tonight because duh because duh so yesterday or two days ago after the conclusion of the yukon bama game the line came out at five and a half and it got bet all the way up to seven and a half it has now since moved down to six and a half um i bet it as soon as it came out at five and a half smart man but now I'm kind of Uh-oh. questioning it. No. Yes. Look, Zach Eady and and Purdue are frauds. Are, well, no, they're not frauds. They're good, but they are, you know, evil. They the are evil. Basketball. They, they play, are. They're the villains. They play very unethical hoops. Um, unethical hoopers. Unethical hoopers. Zach Eady's also just. I don't I, like him. I hate that. Guy. <laughs> I don't like I hate bad that guy. vibes. I don't like him. Um, He's but I think they might cover now. You think they cover five and a half? No, I think they cover seven and a half. Um, So this is what I'm going to do. Nobody's covered five and a half against UConn in what, 17 straight tournament games? No, no, nobody's covered. They've covered every double digit spread since last year. Like, but you're telling me they're going to cover today. Well, they haven't played a one seed, brother. What's up, brother? No, they haven't played a one seed. (laughs) And now, now not only do we get, (laughs) do we get a good one seed matchup? But we also get a good seven footer matchup. Mm. And that should be a ton of fun. I think this game's gonna be close. I'm gonna take the over. I'm gonna take UConn first half, three and a half, and I'm gonna take the uh full game alternate spread, Purdue plus ten and a half. Wow. Yep, that's what we're giving out today on BetMGM. Guys, if you wanna make money. some money on BetMGM, download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your BetMGM Sportsbook account. Place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets. If it loses, if the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first bet. MGM Sportsbook wager through the BetMGM, through the BetMGM mobile sportsbook application for at least $10. You'll receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets. If the bet loses, check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to me talk about this guy. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Good stuff, Puerto Rico. Wow. Just... What were you saying? Get stuff. It was Ontario. It was Ontario, and you said Puerto Rico. No, it's Puerto Rico. What's your beef with Puerto Rico? Nothing. It's just the end of it. No, no, no. I know, but you're just gonna say get stuff that's for no reason. Post, that's what I'm supposed to say. So you're a follower. I'm a bite. I'm a bit biter. I'm okay, biting his bit. You're biting his bit. Okay. At least you're All not right. biting his drip. It is what it is <laughs> at this point. Let's talk about some replacements, though. Yeah. Let's talk about some replacements for Coach Champ just for a second. Okay. I, I know it's it's early in the grieving process. People still want to. They want to cry. They want to scream. Well, I want to throw darts at a dartboard. Like, I get no. it. I get it. What do you mean, no? I want to throw darts at a dartboard of no. Rashad Sample's face. I didn't say that. That's you you, you, com- you completed the sentence there, but. You implied, dude. I just, I just, maybe You're people so like annoying. darts. Maybe people like I darts. You. I don't know. It's like, it's crazy <laughs> to me, right? Like, he's just jumping like that. He's just full on jumping. Um, replacements. Jalen Strong, how do we feel? Hot, not. I don't think he's a real candidate. No. Sadly, yeah. Sadly. So you would be, you would be cool with that? I don't know if it'd be cool. I don't, I don't know how he was his coach, but I. Uh, but it'd be. A, it's a cool story. It is a cool story. I just. I don't know if he's a candidate. Okay. Eric, Definitely a cool story. I. He was coaching. I think it was with Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah. He was coaching and, and, for a quick second. And then that that ended yeah. for I, I believe unknown reasons. I. I would love to have him involved in the program, but for a position that important for a room that stacked. I, I'm not saying that he. There's no chance that he could do the job, but I feel like where you are to go from samples to. To somebody who is relatively unproven in that coaching world, is, Young, it, it's going to be a, a big leap. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm not saying he would be bad, and I'm sure I could talk myself into it if he was hired. I just I I can't see that happening with where the program is and trying to be right now. What about Derek Hagan? So we bring him back to the Sun Devil staff, Arizona time. State legend, Pac-12 wide receiver legend. How does everybody feel about that one? Everybody in the chat, Eric. I mean, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I would be more on board with that. You'd be more on board with Hagen? Yeah, I'd be more on board with Hagen. Just because he, he has some more coaching experience. Okay. Um, but I, I again I I don't know. I don't know why, but like none of the names are like, oh yeah, I don't know. None if of the names I, really I get I you going. I, I I don't know. Well, maybe the last one, but uh I don't know if it's just still kind of like I'm sad. Mm. Like again, like I'm not like hitting the You're panic button. You're still really grieving right now. But it's just like, man, they're not Sam though. You they're know? not Sam. They're not Sam. You know, sometimes you got to move on. You got to see no, you know, know. what's on the other side. Sometimes the grass is greener, you know? Not to say that it, it will be, but sometimes it is. Maybe this is a case, right? LTC yeah. in the chat. Hagen wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, it'd be fine. It'd be fine. This is exact. This is this way he would he would absolutely say hey, he's fine. They're getting fine. No, he's mad at me still about the dart thing. He's no, I'm not. Just, no. I'm not mad at all. I'm just I'm just dumb. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it is. Here's a name that uh, Just Chili brought up on, on social media. If you haven't followed Just Chili yet, definitely um, go do that. But talking about. Um, a, a guy in Coach Chad Savage. He is a coach over at Colorado State. Um, coaches wide receivers already in Big 12 territory. Great recruiter. Good X's and O's guy. Um, doesn't have any ties to Arizona that I know of off the top of my head. But you get a young coach, a dude that, again, is familiar with recruiting in Big 12 territory. I think that would be, uh, it, it's certainly an appealing name. His last name is Savage. Yeah. That's a big plus. He's also the recruiting coordinator. So out of the three that we've named, that's where you're. Yeah. Are you? You're yeah. all Team Savage here. Yeah, definitely you? Team Team Savage. The the Has, name is there. Hashtag Team Savage. Hashtag Team Savage. Get it. Get, team it savage. get it. Trending, guys. No, I I would feel like out of all of them, just because he has the most experience, especially with the recruiting side as well. When you lose the best recruiter in the Pac-12, you probably want to replace him with somebody who has a a wealth of knowledge in that area. Yeah, which is something that the two other guys you can't say had. And uh, he's he, he's also coached a good group. Like he's he's a good football coach too. So it's like if you get somebody who can actually coach well, recruit well, has a great name, and it's like the trifecta, you know. Yeah, there you short go. Short bus, what's going on? Yeah, short he bus. He says no. Yeah, but to what exactly? Why? I think to Chad Savage. He's by Van Ness. Uh, go get whoever coach in Colorado State receivers. He always has. It's not a coherent sentence. He always has what beats by Van Ness. Um, look, moving on from the coach champ debacle dilemma whatever you want to call it, departure. Um, let's go ahead. Let's talk about the the latest domino, or I guess the first domino to fall in the college basketball carousel, coaching carousel here. Um, John Calipari. Wait, did you say it was the first domino to fall? Is there another domino that's oh, fallen? Yes. Go ahead. This dates back all the way to, well, let me find the date. I'm going to just, I'm gonna, let's I know, sit back. I'm going to let back. him cook. I'm going to let yeah. him cook real quick. Because I feel like he's got to get some off his chest here. This date's no, not on my chest. December 6, 2023. Can you tell me what happened that day? December 6, 2023. Can you tell me what happened that day? <laughs> don't don't Google it. Not the top of my head. Somebody no. retired. ASU basketball did what? December 6, 2023. Mm -hmm. ASU hired Mickey Mitchell. No. <laughs> 2023? Did, did they demolish USC on that no. day? That's close, though. Pac-12 play didn't start yet. That's close. December. Something happened. Non-conference play, who did they beat or lose to? They beat SMU. SMU, March 21st, fires their head coach and replaces him with Andy Enfield from USC. USC now has an opening, and then who's hired at USC? Yeah, boy, must bus. Eric Musselman, which came from? Arkansas. Which then hired? Calipari. So the first domino to fall was Is ASU it? beating SMU. <laughs> That, okay. It's impressive. Sure, that's if you want to take impressive. it there. Oh man, I can't wait to clip that. That headline's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, "How are you here?" <laughs> <laughs> that is one. <laughs> Look, that's that's crazy. First off, it's a crazy jump. Um, do you think it impacts Arizona State at all? Like maybe ASU set it off but do we see a world where so the only the only way it, w it, it would and I don't think this is going to happen but people are like Did Tommy Lloyd replace him at Kentucky no that's the only way it would so um, that's what they said about Fish though could he could he go to Washington no I didn't say that yeah, but Tommy a lot Lloyd of people did. Kentucky? Tommy, they, but they Tommy's got yeah, his extension. They talk, they talk, but they did talk about it on the show this morning on U of A. They Tommy did talk Lloyd about to Tommy's name being thrown out there for the Kentucky yeah, that's job. Just, that's just good. Do you think if... That's just good headline. What if... What if it, hear, hear me out here. Whoa. Hear me out. Hear me out, brother. What if... And this is probably not going to happen, but I'm just spitballing here. 
What if Kentucky hired the Gonzaga coach and the Gonzaga opening came open? Then are we talking about a real life scenario? Mark Few is not leaving. But but let's but let's let's dance in what if land, you know? So Mark Few to Kentucky. Then boom. I can't think of that though. That's Why not? Gross. Just think. Think um, real hard. Put so, your thinking cap on. So there there are there I mean, obviously, like that's that's where Tommy Lloyd came from. He was a he was Mark Few's assistant and a big part in the recruiting, um, especially of international talent. I mean, that's why they've kind of always been that international school. Um and yeah, they've I mean, I think that is probably his dream job, but I don't know, man. I don't know if he'd leave. You guys are missing how this impacts us. Well, how does I mean, it impact it's, us? This is the offer he can't refuse on the table. Is Dan Hurley going to Kentucky and taking his brother with him? No. Uh, uh, no, I don't think Dan Hurley's leaving UConn. Not if, if he went back to back If they throw a lifetime contract at him? Yeah, but, I mean, UConn would throw a lifetime yeah, contract yeah. at him, too. Yeah, UConn, they've seen what, I mean, yeah, that's... But you're, you're, saying that, you're saying that Bobby would be an assistant? At Kentucky? That's definitely a step up. I don't know. If he, whoa! Oh. That's mean. <laughs> That's rude. Yeah, I think I think Nate Oates is going to be Kentucky's head coach. You think? As as Beats by Venice. Yeah, I think Nate Oates is going to be their head coach. Um, the SEC is just like you you want to be at a blue blood, and the SEC hasn't produced the blue bloods yet. Obviously, Kentucky is that blue blood in the yeah. SEC, and the only blue blood yeah. in the SEC. So. So leaving Bama for Kentucky is a duh, and you're staying in conference. And they so. would they would love him because talk about two completely different styles of coaching yeah. in Coach Cal and, yeah. and Nate Oates. Like they yeah. their entire system would be completely changed. It'd yeah. be a breath of fresh air over there. I mean, if I was Kentucky, I would go after Nate Oates. If I was Nate Oates, I would seriously consider it. There you go, Jacob. Nate Oates hired at Kentucky. Bobby Hurley is his, his assistant. They flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> So regardless, Bobby Hurley is going to be an assistant in Kentucky is what we're saying. Yeah. Scott Drew is also, yeah, I think it's Scott Drew and Nate Oates. I've seen a lot of the Billy Donovan stuff, the Bulls coach. Brother. What? Billy Donovan couldn't win at Florida. You, I'm not making the hire, okay? <laughs> you're acting like I'm the guy making the hire here. Damon, you're a gross bad person. Why are we gross bad people? Because oh, because we're, we're talking about Tommy. About Tommy. Yeah. Sorry, man. Sorry, it is what it is. Eric Reed in the chat. Hurley has been recruiting four-star recruits for a while now, but he either has a hard time evaluating them or develop, developing them. He recruits defensive-minded guys, but they can't. They just can't shoot consistently. No. Sigh. <laughs> Sigh. No, that's just not. It's the thy speak fallacy. Thy speak fallacy. He doesn't recruit defensive-minded guys. He he recruits af- athletes. Yeah. He does recruit and, athletic and players. Most 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 of the, his guards are pretty offensive minded. I would yeah. say. Um, developing thing. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> still up in the, the developing. <laughs> yeah, look, I don't, I don't think there's a world where Bobby Hurley gets um, poached in, as an assistant or as a head coach for for any of these positions that open up. But you never know. There's obviously a, a lot of dominoes that could potentially fall. Seen there, there was a graphic that had Bruce Pearl on it, so potentially there's an opening there. No, um, what, what do you mean? No, you don't like that? I yeah. love Bruce Pearl at Auburn, it just, fits. <laughs> it just works. Look, man, you if never they know. Would have won, you never know if they would have won that first round game. They're, I'm seeing them, I'm seeing them at State Farm Stadium tonight. That's true, that is very true, but and, you're not now, all Eric, because Eric did it. And Eric is, is I ain't saying anything, he he's, ruined that for he's you, kissing my feet and saying, You're so smart, Shane, mm. but no. Now what are you doing? Now I'm just going and hanging out and watching. <laughs> watching Man, that must suck. Now yeah. I'm just hanging out. I'm just hanging out. Look, I don't know about y'all, but you guys should head over to Circle K. Okay? I stopped there already once this morning. I'm going to stop on my way home. Maybe grab myself a snack, a little treat, to fuel me through the rest of the day, get me to that national championship game, guys. Got great snacks and great deals on gas. Thanks to their free membership program inner circle it's going to help you guys save 25 cents per gallon on your first five phillips then save three cents per gallon every single day after that not to mention you're going to get every sixth free on a selection of those circle k treaties we're talking pizza coffee ice cold fountain drinks and more join inner circle for free by downloading that circle k app today terms and conditions apply at participating locations visit circlek.com for details so shane you got a pretty good day lined up for you huh I'm going to the Final Four the championship game. What if I could make it better? You can't, though. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, contraire. It's crazy. I can make it better. How? Because if you heard of a legal Pete's new sound check oh, deal, yeah. 
Wow. That's right. Woo. That's right. Yippee. Woohoo. Listen, it's, it, it, it is a really, yeah. really good deal because if you bring in your ticket stub from any ticketed event, yours just happens to be a very cool ticketed event. Mm. You can get a draft beer or a house margarita for a penny with mm. the purchase of an adult Can I put potatoes entree. on my on my burrito? You can do whatever you want at Dude, Illegal Pete's. potatoes? Yeah, pa, 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 pa. Take it from Shane. What, yep. <laughs> Take it from Shane. Illegal Pete's. <laughs> How else would you, can you describe, if I list off some foods, can you give me a sound yeah, of sure. what okay. they represent? Okay. A nice taco from them. Mm. A little salad. Ooh. Burrito. <laughs> Nacho. <laughs> if you want to experience all of this, plus custom cocktails, like queso. No, it, was like, it was like setting something on fire. <laughs> yeah. Can you give me a margarita one? Can I give you a margarita? Yeah. Nice. Mm, yeah, just a little. Wow. Listen, you can experience all of this crazy <laughs> at Illegal Pete's, guys. Your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. Get that sound check deal when you purchase an adult entree. One penny, get a draft beer or a house margarita. Which one would you pick if you were going tonight? What is that? What is that thing? Oh, well, God. Don't look directly uh, at it. Ah. Uh, oh. Uh, my eyes. Uh, oh, my eyes. <laughs> Jacob, that wasn't a circle. Uh, just do a just a square. <laughs> I, Bit ruined. And I was like, make it a circle, and he's you like, I got it. A door. square. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. That was a rectangle. Okay, that was smooth. Let's, let's let's get that straight. Let's get that straight. Okay. Oh yeah, I did, but I meant circle. You know what I meant? How? How would he know what you? <laughs> there was the cliffs. <laughs> How would he? Yay. Okay. Let's talk about ASU softball. Do yeah? it. You want to talk ASU softball? Actually. I don't want to hear what you guys have to say about ASC Fair. softball at all, to be completely honest with you. Let's go ahead. Let's get to this week's Kelsey's Corner. Welcome back to another edition of Kelsey's Corner with Arizona State softball player Kelsey Hall. Kelsey, 18 and 18 right now. Last time we spoke, you guys were just gearing up for your first road trip of the season. Um, really, since then, Pac-12 play, it's been an absolute gauntlet. Just where do you feel like you guys are at as a team right now? Yeah, it has been a while since I've been in here. I know, I know. Missed you guys. You're traveling uh, the world, so that's... It's call us world travels, travelers of the PNW. You know? There you go. We have faced so much weather. Did we, we didn't even talk uh -oh, about that. No, we didn't that. even talk about the weather. I feel like every single series we've had, there's been rain. And it's crazy, even at home. Yeah. When we played Oregon State, luckily there wasn't rain in Stanford this week. But, you know, 18 and 18, where we're at, I think we have a choice right now of how we want the season to finish. It obviously hasn't gone exactly as we have hoped, but at the end of the day, we talk about it all the time how close we are in these games against really, really good teams, yeah. and we're going to break through as long as we we do something about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we'll get there. We will get there. For you personally, what adjustments do you want to make throughout the rest of the season to, to really help the team elevate their play? I mean, this is obviously my first and last time in the pack, and it's definitely been an experience. It's mm -hmm. so awesome to be able to compete regularly against pitchers like Nigeri Kennedy from Stanford, and every weekend is an elite weekend. Yeah. And so I think for me where I can continue to elevate is right, not even just rising to the level of competition, but being a consistent soundboard, whether it's performance-wise, leadership-wise, emotionally yeah. i think at the end of the day no matter what our result is is just continuing to buy into a process for our team and so we continue to build whether it's ends in a win or a loss i think if we do the little things right we're going to continue to build and go in the right direction you mentioned some of the just high level pitching here in the pac-12 obviously you were a part of the mountain west and not not a knock on the mountain west at all but do you see like just the the difference in caliber in the pac-12 Oh, the Pac-12 is unreal. Yeah. It's, it's a monster of its own, and it's been such an amazing experience. I think, obviously, the Mountain West is a very respected program. They have a team. They had a team make it to Supers last year, San Diego State. And so I think that definitely got me prepared for the mindset. And, it yeah, but Pac-12 is definitely a different breed. Like I said, the pitching is elite every weekend. There's no off weekend. There's no pitcher that comes in. You're like, all right, guys. <laughs> We take take, take your the foot off. off the gas, yeah. you know, so it's exactly where I wanted to be, though. It's the exact level of competition and who I wanted to play against. So I'm very blessed to be a part of this. Obviously, conference. you guys have the opportunity now with a, a couple series left before you hit that Pac-12 tournament. 
where do you feel like that shift in mindset really needs to go? Because I, I believe there's only four series left and then one game against Grand Canyon. I think a lot of what we talk about is really elephant in the room. We have nothing to lose. Yeah. And I think it's the defining aspect of we have every capability to have this rest of the season go the way we want to if we let ourselves play with that mindset. And really, what what's the worst that could happen? Things that have already happened. And so I think the belief in us is the fact that we can beat these teams. We're in a such... We're in such good positions constantly, and that is for a reason because yeah. we do have the talent, we do have the mindset, we do have the belief in ourselves. But I think really it's just playing in the way that like we were talking about earlier. And at the end of the day, just go out there, play, and compete. Yeah, it does feel like you guys are, are so close in some of these games against such, again, teams in the top 10, teams in yeah. the top 15, where it does feel like it's just like one inning just needs to go your guys' way and things yes. can change. Yes, we talk about it a lot. There's a lot of... Really, there's not one play that defines a game or anything like that. But like this last game we had against Stanford, we were down 1-0 with runners at first and third and seventh mm -hmm. inning against the, one of, if not the number one pitcher in the nation. You know, so like it is very in our power to, and we do have the moments where we do compete and because we can do it. So I think it's continuing to believe in it that we are in those positions for a reason. It's not just luck. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to transition a little bit off of softball and just talk about kind of what's going on in the Valley. Obviously, you had the Final Four um, with, with men's basketball, but I want to talk about the the women's Final Four for a second because that was, I mean, just first off, abs absolutely electric. And we could talk about like Iowa, Caitlin Clark. We could talk about UConn and, and South Carolina and all that. But first, I just want to, from from like your perspective, seeing the the way that that final four and really this this women's college basketball season has gone kind of transforming that sport um like on a national scale and then for for young women as well like how much for you the, does that mean as somebody that is in that same kind of opportunity in in the the women's college athletics just like era of it like starting to grow like how much of what happened for the women's final four does that mean to you I think, unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch a lot of the games considering we were playing games ourselves. <laughs> unfortunately, I, I didn't even know the championship game had happened. And I asked That's one of my crazy. teammates in the airport. I was like, oh, when's the game? They're like, it's it, over. it actually just happened. <laughs> <It's over. laughs> but I think the fact that you go on your phone and the first thing that I see is about the women's side yeah. of the Final Four and the March Madness is absolutely electric. I eat it up. And I think it's really exciting to see the future of women's sports really just growing. I think to see so many young girls at our games this weekend and being able to talk to some of them and connect with them, it just makes me really happy to be such a, I'm, I mean, I'm so lucky to be at Arizona State and yeah. have girls come up and look at you like you are just the superstar when in reality, it's just we're doing what we love. And it's really exciting to see women get the acknowledgement they deserve because we do compete and we do grind and we do deserve it because of how we work. And Absolutely. so it's exciting to see it definitely evolve. Now, in terms of the men's championship, you got that game tonight, UConn Purdue. Have you been keeping up with the tournament at all? <laughs> You're going to say no, huh? No, no, no. I watched, I watched Purdue and Alabama. Okay. Yeah, I did watch that game because we had our off weekend and I was in Chicago and so visiting one of my best friends and her older brother had like a watch party. So I was watching. You were watching games. And they were all really locked in for Purdue. So it was it's really exciting to see. I think it's cool that it's here, which is so awesome. And yeah. you can see when we were in the airport last night, we saw so many people here for it. So I think it's going to be I will I can watch tonight. <laughs> but Purdue or UConn? Who, who's who's coming out on top? I'm going to go Purdue. Wow. I like an underdog. Wow. Wow. I like the drama. Wow. I hate watching Purdue basketball. Why? I just, Zach Eady gets on my nerves. What did he do to you? He's just 7 <laughs> 4. He's 7 4 and he plays boring oh, basketball. Oh, come on. 7 4 and he plays boring basketball. I just, seven, I can't stand four, it. Don't I can't hate stand it. it. I can't stand it. You're almost there. I'm almost, that's crazy. I'm almost <laughs> 7 4. I'm almost he's, 7 4. He's almost just, just like, just like that much to go, you know, just just a tad, that much to just go. a tad. It is what it is. Look, you can grill me. You can grill me about not being seven four. I want to grill you about right. some of your, <laughs> right. your 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 concert picks that you had. I think it was All the right, first time, chat. the first time that we had Kelsey on. 
we did like what would your dream concert lineup be, right? Your dream festival lineup. Mm-hmm. And you had Morgan Wallen, who as of <laughs> Monday morning, April 8th, has been arrested for uh, throwing a chair in Nashville <laughs> off of a roof. Um, you had Drake, which I, I can still live with Drake. I've, I've seen Drake now, and I can confirm that that's when a great choice. San Antonio a couple weeks ago. Really? Yeah, yeah it was absolutely electric. I didn't know that. It's phenomenal. Um, and who was the was little baby? <laughs> little baby was the second one. <laughs> who am I? Right? Like, what, what are we doing? What are we? Like, do you want to? First off, do you want to defend those picks? And do, would you like to make some revisions to to what you said? I would definitely make revisions. I think. First off, you gave me no time to prepare. Oh for fun. my god! You gave me no so it's time. My fault. Yes, you are the issue here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I had I was just going for versatility because I didn't know my audience and I wanted to make sure everyone <laughs> felt like they could see someone mm. that they might enjoy. Could be represented so at your your festival. I was doing this for you guys. Mm, there you, you go. know, but you should do it over for them now. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> now to reflect on myself, I think the <laughs> I think the only genre of music I've listened to is country recently. Mm. I've totally evolved. I've I've grown up. I've, I've grown up. I I know myself now, but I would still put Morgan in there. You know, I, I you're love still you. putting Morgan in there. I'm still putting That's Morgan crazy. in there. I am. You know what? He is going to get. I want to take Zach Bryan out of it. He got arrested. Yeah. So we're going. Maybe your whole festival should just be at like a local county prison or something. <laughs> <laughs> just I just get all, get them back to I get back all to back. the famous convicts. I'm oh like, you're coming gosh. with me. Get a microphone. No. So, so we're still. See, I'm still putting Morgan in still there. Still Morgan Wallen, okay. And then this might be a hot take. Do you even listen to? I don't. You don't give me country. I mean, but. occasionally. Yeah, occasionally. See, that's not good enough. But I'm gonna put. Chris, that's not good enough. Yeah, I'm gonna put Chris Stapleton in there. Okay, I've heard of Chris Stapleton. He's unreal with his vocals, and I would do anything to see him. Okay. Live, so I go Morgan, Mr. Chris, Sorry. and <laughs> Mr. Chris, and then my favorite. Artist at the moment is Parker McCollum. Yeah, I've never heard of him. See, and that's that's where you're missing. That's where you're that's, missing. That's things. where I need to yeah, be better. Yeah, that's where you need to be better. I just need to go to the tape and just. You he know. was actually here in March, I believe, but we were playing, so obviously <laughs> didn't get to go. You know, we're always playing softball. Always playing. We, always playing. Yeah, we're Could always watch what was Final Four. Could go to the concerts. Yeah. You know what? Just dingers. The grind's all. worth it. Just dingers. That's all. Well, you're like I said, you you've got. A, a hell of a stretch now in, in Pac-12 play. You got the Pac-12 tourney, um, and then it's a new season, right? Pac-12 tournament starts. It really is like you can kind of wipe away the the new year and start fresh. I, I mean, it's something that like you see in in really all collegiate postseasons mm-hmm. outside of like football because there's like four teams in the postseason. But you, I mean, the NCAA tournament, right? NC State was an 11 seed. They just climbed their way to the Final Four. Uh, you see me in college baseball all the time. So like. It really is, I, I think, a start for you guys. Um, and, and what do I know, right? I'm hosting a podcast. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not, not in the clubhouse no, but or anything. But wrong. like, you're, it, you're it really is a fresh wrong. start. Yeah, I think that is a lot of what we talk about as well. Is like, why not us? Yeah. At the end of the day, the game doesn't know what the result was of the last game. So I think again, if we allow ourselves to go into each game and be like, we deserve to be here and we have nothing to lose. And yeah. just like technically the other team doesn't have anything to lose. Cause a lot of a saying that I really like that we use is happy opening day. I'll say it a lot. Coach K showed it to us earlier in the year. And it's just no matter what, just going in with the energy of, I don't remember what happened. It's opening day, the emotions and the excitement to play. And I just think if we allow ourselves to just go be who we know we can be, we've seen spurts of it. We've taken games. We've had great games that w- where we compete mm-hmm. and playing to that standard. I think exactly what you said. We have nothing to lose, and why not us? Why not have that story? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we're definitely, definitely gonna continue talking softball the the next time that you come on here. You guys, <laughs> like you said, you got happy, happy opening day. You're back at home. Does it feel nice to finally be back oh at Club goodness, Barrington this yes. week? I, I've missed Arizona. I'm telling you, the weather of the PNW, I did not miss. Got to you a little bit. Yes, it it rattled us a little bit. <laughs> well, no, I just shouldn't say it rattled us because even our Washington, the game that we won on Sunday, we had a really huge um, rain delay. It was almost like a hail delay. That sucks. So, that sucks. and we competed and we came back and we won though. So it, we know how to play in adversity. That's for sure. But I like the warmth. That's why I came to Arizona. Easy, easily. So, yeah, it'll be a good series against Utah. 
they're putting some wins together, but I think it's another good matchup for us. And I think if we go out there and compete, you guys show up yeah. to Club Farrington, make some noise for us. I think it'll be a good weekend. Yeah, definitely, guys. Head out this weekend to Club Farrington, um, ASU softball, take it on Utah. First pitch, that first game at 6 o'clock on Friday. Kelsey, before we get you out of here, you know, I didn't give you enough time to prepare for the concert question, and I'm mm -hmm. just going to continue to not give you enough time to prepare. All right. Um, I so I need really quickly, really quickly, because today is the solar eclipse, I need your <laughs> least favorite planet and your favorite planet not named Earth. Just so, like, when the aliens come and invade. You know where I'll be. Yeah. And you know where I won't be. Yeah, exactly. Or if they're aliens from the planet that you don't like, you know. I like Neptune. You like Neptune. I like Neptune. Is there... I like the idea of Neptune. What is the idea of Neptune? Neptune's blue, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like that. I like the name. I like what it has to offer. Um, I remember what learning. It has to offer? <laughs> I remember learning about it in fifth grade. Such a college athlete. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> <laughs> like the idea of it, you know. I, you know I love what? its effort, its intensity. I'm gonna its buy into out there. it. Yeah. You know what? So if this eclipse goes down south, I'll be there. Neptune. Okay. My least favorite, Saturn. I don't really vibe with it. No, you don't vibe with all those rings or what? Yeah, no, it's no. It's, it's doing too much. It's, it's like doing it's, too much. It's called, it's like a lot of attention to wow, it. Wow. Okay, that's fair. What about you? That's fair. Ooh, that. least favorite planet, Jupiter. Jupiter for sure. <laughs> what did Jupiter do? It's to you? just you know, Jupiter's that planet that that just thinks it's way too, way 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 too big. You know, it's almost like it, it's, it's seven four. It's almost like it's Zachy. Yeah, exactly. It's seven, it's seven four. four. And I'm just like, pfft, we get it. You don't get need it. to be. You don't need to be that big. Like, come on now. What are we doing here? Yeah. So Jupiter, no. Um, favorite planet? Oh man, Sun's not a planet, right? No, it's a star, right? Yeah, it is. A star. Yeah um wow this you is would tough have picked the sun yeah absolutely just heat you know it would have burned i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm gonna say saturn i'm gonna say saturn all sorry right. i'm sorry That's but fine. saturn just we can agree to disagree. all the rings all the rings guys that is going to do it for this week's kelsey's corner definitely head out to club farrington again this friday 6 p.m against utah totri will be there too that's what he said <laughs> Saturn? <laughs> she hates Saturn? Yeah, I don't know. Saturn's tell you. awesome. Loves the idea of Neptune though. The yeah, idea. The of idea it. of Neptune is what? You're just gonna fall through it, it's all gas. I like, don't know. Cool. I don't yeah, I don't know. I mean Saturn's idea. all gas, but it has it has rings and that's awesome. All the rings. Love that. Pluto. Um, you have do you have favorite planet, least favorite? Um big fan of Mars because it's like close. Big fan of Mars. It's okay. very it's it's physically it's close to us, but it's also like the closest thing to being habitable. Mars is like Zion Williamson. It's like the prospect that you knew was always oh, yeah, gonna be really good. We're just talking the solar system, right? Yeah, yeah, our solar yeah, system. We're not yeah. talking Kepler and yeah, no. all that Too deep. shit. Yeah, no, Too we're good. Do you have a least favorite? Um Yeah, all my homies hate Neptune. All my homies. Actually, I love the name too. Neptune though. Neptune does go it crazy. It looks cool too. Neptune blue, does look yeah? cool. Yeah. Over that? Yeah, it looks like a little marble. That looks yeah, cool. Venus sucks. Suck at Venus. Suck at Venus? Suck at Venus. What about you, Eric? Oh, uh, I see. I like Saturn. I like the rings. Yeah, Saturn, Saturn. We're all pro Saturn. Saturn. Saturn's I like awesome. the rings. Like, that's just, it's got a good look to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, least favorite? Mercury hasn't really been. Mercury, no. Hasn't really been talked about. I feel no. like it's just uh, Mercury's the closest one to the sun, right? I think so. Yeah, that shit is hot as hell. Hell no. <laughs> Well, on Absolutely that note. Absolutely not. On that note, guys, that's going to do it for today's <laughs> PHNX Sun Devil Show. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a five-star review if you're listening on audio. Do us one other favor. Give um, us a follow. Learn about the moons of all the planets also. Those are really cool. Our moon goes pretty crazy. Our moon's awesome. We just called it the moon. Yeah. And it's the amen. moon. Yeah. <laughs> the, the moon. moon. Yeah, it's like the Arizona State University. Yeah. You know? The moon. The that's it. You know, there's so a got. storm on Jupiter that's just been ravaging that planet for its entire existence. Give us a follow you at know, phnx <laughs> underscore sun devil. Like the size of Earth? The storm? I think so. It's something crazy like that. Can you look up the size of the Jupiter? We're not done yet. Can we look up the size? <laughs> that's crazy. Of the Jupiter? A diameter of 15,400 miles. Okay, that doesn't help me. I have no idea the diameter of Earth. Does anybody know the diameter of Earth? No, it's not common knowledge. It should be. It's seven thousand nine hundred seventeen. So it's double. It's, it's double, double the size the, of double, the diameter. That's how big the storm is. Not insane. That's how big the storm. Yeah, the storm. Big is ass double. storm, dude. Have you ever seen it? Look up the look up the Jupiter storm. It's, it looks like a. Looks All like right, a, everybody, play along right now. Yep, everybody play along. Look up Jupiter it storm. Looks like at a, home. Um, like a like a like a birthmark on a planet. Pretty crazy. And that's double the size of Earth. Is that insane? It's called the Great Red Spot. Yep. 
Freaks you out, man. Scary Persistent stuff. high pressure region. You can follow in the him atmosphere. on Twitter at Anthony underscore Toe Tree. You can follow Eric on Twitter at Eric Ruby with a K. Follow it's true. Wow. The great Jacob Franklin. Making all the magic happen behind the Mac at Jacob underscore Franklin four. No, just Jacob Franklin four underscore Franklin four. Uh, the DJ, origin DJ, of the storm DJ, is unknown. DJ Franklin, he has a kid. Yeah. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Shane Deef. The, uh, the storm chaser. The red spot's no. changing. It is <laughs> according <laughs> to NASA. Alive. Just expanding alive. my my mind and horizons of the planets as always. And we'll hmm. see you guys tomorrow. But until then, go Devils and peace. peace. We all silly like the mayor. 